Hey guys, do you remember cards like this one? This is a PhysX PPU or Physics Processing Unit. Agea is the company behind this card. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Back in the day, I loved reading the reviews. The technology seemed impressive, but there weren't many games out there, just a handful of tech demos and a few supported titles. Now many games implemented physics already, trying to make games feel more realistic with particles, smoke, cloth, fluids behaving more natural. The idea of using dedicated hardware for physics was to offload work away from the processor and you would end up with more realistic and immersive games. In 2008, Nvidia bought the company and the technology is now called Nvidia PhysX and it could run on a GeForce card instead of having to have a dedicated physics processing unit card. Now I checked my records and I bought this card in 2017. It's a version from Dell with PCI Express. It has 128 megabytes of DDR3 memory and I paid $17 so a fairly good price. I haven't used it since, but I noticed two of the capacitors fell off. So I brought some parts and I'll give it a go and we'll see if I can repair it. If you are into repairing, you probably heard of PCBWay, our channel sponsor. It's your one-stop shop for printed circuit boards, manufacturing and assembly, but also CNC machining, 3D printing and more. I also want to thank Tony. He runs the Tony's Tinkering Repair Shop, a YouTube channel. I've been binge watching his repair videos recently. He gave me a few pointers for yeah, soldering with SMD components. That's new to me. I'll leave a link to his channel down in the video description. And also a big thank you to Vets, a Vogons user. He compiled and uploaded all the driver versions, demos and much more onto the Vogons driver website. Because Nvidia bought Agea in 2008, it's important we use drivers from 2007, which means we also need matching hardware. The motherboard we are using today is from Gigabyte. It's an LGA775 board with a Core 2 Duo. It's the E7600. We have four gigabytes of RAM in dual channel configuration. For the video card, we have a real highlight. It's the Nvidia GeForce 8800 GTX. And for storage, we have a Western Digital Blue SSD with 500 gigabyte. 2007 was also the year when Windows Vista launched. So you have a choice of, well, are you gonna go with Windows XP or Windows Vista? I chose to stick with Windows XP for this project. At first the system wouldn't post and it turns out that the RAM I went with has 1066 megahertz and yeah, for whatever reason this motherboard doesn't seem to like it. So I swapped it for another pair of Corsair sticks with 800 megahertz and the board fired up just fine. I also had a loose connection from the GeForce, but yeah, reinserting the DVI cable fixed that. And here I am loading the BIOS defaults and now we have a running system. I'm using Win Setup from USB to install Windows XP. Well, you guessed it, from a USB thumb drive. After Windows is installed, I connect a USB hard drive. Remember, Windows XP has a two terabyte partition limit, so I'm using a two terabyte drive. And I'm running the Snappy Driver Installer Origin. I'm installing all the drivers apart from the ones for the 8800 GTX. The NVIDIA driver we're going with is 162.18 from July of 2007. And then I like to run 3 d Mark to see if everything is working fine. We have 51,290 points for 3 d Mark 2001 SE. And in 3 d Mark 03, we're getting 38,138. And now we get to the fun part, trying to repair this PhysX card. The first step was sourcing the replacement capacitors. They're labeled SVP series. So I did a quick Google search and found a data sheet. The capacitors are from Panasonic. There are only two types of capacitors on this card. One rated four volts and 560 and the other one 20 volts and 150. 
Now I've done plenty of soldering in the past on 386 and 486 motherboards, a Pentium 4 polymod even, and one of those parallel port sound card kits. And that all worked fine, but for whatever reason, SMD soldering, maybe it's just a different ball game, but yeah, I really struggled. The solder just wouldn't really like to flow right. Now this was my first time using flux, so maybe there is a learning curve to that. I followed the usual steps, cleaning the board with alcohol and then I applied some clean solder with some flux and then removed the solder again with solder wick. The pads were quite clean, but I had real issues trying to get these capacitors to hold. In the end, I did manage to get them on, but it really didn't feel satisfying. And yeah, I definitely feel like I need to practice a lot more. So here is the smoke test. I installed a card. It needs a Molex power cable from the power supply. And after turning on the computer, the fan spins. There's an unknown device in device manager, so that's looking good. The drivers are installing fine, but unfortunately hardware acceleration does not happen. And in the driver control panel, there is a diagnostics process you can run and it throws an error. So guys, that's a real disappointment, but that's just the reality of working with old parts. The annoying aspect is that the original Agea tech demos and some of those games will only work on original physics hardware. So what I did next was I installed NVIDIA drivers from 2008 and it sort of, yeah, replaces the shortcuts of the Agea software, taking you directly into the NVIDIA driver control panel. And here you can toggle between do you want the physics acceleration happening on the processor or on your video card? The driver version I'm going with is now version 182.06 from early 2009. I had a go at running these older Agea demos, but they will only run in software mode. Well, at least something, we have something to look at on the screen. The performance isn't bad. Most of them seem to be running at 60 FPS. But there's one program, it's called Reality Mark, a benchmark. This one really struggles on the CPU with getting single digit FPS. And at the end, it draws a chart telling you, well, if you buy a PPU card, this is the performance that you can expect. Nvidia also put together some demos to showcase the power of physics on their GeForce cards. It's called GeForce Plus Power Packs and still available on their website. These demos all run pretty well and look lovely. They also have a toggle switch where you can switch between how does it run with the uh, physics calculations on the graphics card compared to on the processor and we can really see a clear difference. If you are interested to find out, well, what sort of games support the physics technology, there's a really good list on PC Gaming Wiki and I will put it down below in the video description. So yeah, guys, this was a real bummer because the idea of this video was not really to showcase physics on GeForce cards. Firstly, there are many videos already out there and I would likely put together a totally different system with Windows Vista because there are games that support physics. They are from 2009, 2010, 2011, much newer than the system that I put together. I really wanted to showcase this specific card and the tech demos and games supporting the Agea drivers. But yeah, this is just the nature of working with old hardware. I looked online in forums discussions from around 2008 and 2009 and you could even run two NVIDIA GeForce cards in a system and then have one be a dedicated physics uh, card taking over the physics calculations. That is quite interesting. And I also got the sense that over the years as newer video cards got released, you really didn't have to worry about that anymore. If you had a fairly capable video card from a few, a few generations newer, it could handle all the physics stuff on that one single card. 
So on the one hand, it is sad that this card didn't work for me, but it's not a big loss because you're only talking about, yeah, some tech demos and a few games that will not run without it. But starting from 2008, because NVIDIA bought out Agea, well, there are many games and tech demos that do run on a GeForce card that is readily available yeah, for not too much money these days. I didn't have a look at the current prices, what these cards go for, but it's really something you don't need to rush out and buy unless you are uh, a collector and you have some sort of a nostalgic reason to get one. As for the soldering, I'm fully aware when you show some soldering on YouTube, you open the gates for comments and what you're doing wrong. That's just the nature of running a YouTube channel, but that's fine. I bought a few little soldering kits uh, online. I will do some practicing, maybe something wrong with my equipment or I bought the wrong flux or I don't, I don't know quite what's going on, but yeah, I will use some donor cards that are broken and do some more practicing with the SND soldering because the reality is um, capacitors do die and this is a skill I really want to get my head around. So, and now I want to hear from you. What is your take on the whole physics technology from Agea and then later Nvidia buying it out? I remember for a while there were maybe some hacked drivers where you could combine physics running on a NVIDIA card, but having an ATI Radeon card for your main GPU, if you have any interesting stories to share from that uh, era, please do so down below in the comment section. And also, what sort of games can I maybe in the future use to really showcase physics and what it has to offer? And finally, one uh, important point I want to make, a lot of people were disappointed. You bought the physics card and the FPS went down. Well, this is because um, the physics card only does the physics calculations. It gives the GPU actually more to render because now you have a fluid and you have cloth and the graphics card still needs to render all that. So the physics card, yeah, gave the GPU more work, but um, as technology, improved, it did end up making games more immersive and more realistic. So guys, there you go. That was my checking out of the PhysX card from Agea technology from 2007 and a few years earlier. So yeah, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.